Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about budget, space, and resolution. Obviously resolution is the goal, right? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get rid of all the issues that rooms cause. Easiest solution to that whole problem is get rid of the room. <laughs> but we can't do that, right? It's the room that's causing all the problems. Get rid of the room, we have less problems. We'll still have some problems, but mostly noise at that point, right? So budget determines the resolution that you can achieve in the room. It's just the way it is. Space determines the resolution. And room size determines the resolution. So all of these variables have to be considered together. You can't separate them and you can't you know, pick one at a time and work through it. You gotta look at all three and develop a strategy towards the resolution goal. Resolution must be the design goal. You have to decide, you know, you have to quantify and qualify. Qualify the problems, quantify how large they are, where they're at, what frequency they're at. This is what you have to do. And then you have to develop a strategy with a series of tactics to resolve those issues. Step by step, you can stage it. I get it. You don't have enough budget to, to achieve the resolution goal that you're after. We can do it in stages. That's the nice thing about acoustical treatment. You can do it in stages. But you got to look at the whole picture first. You got to look at how much budget we have, what kind of space we have, and what is our resolution goal. You have to have a strategy. You know, if you're building a house, first you get an architect to draw it and think of all the steps you go through before that final drawing is approved. Hours and hours of changes. Hours and hours of meetings. Where's the electrical outlets going to be? Where's the light switch going to be? What kind of air conditioning system are we going to have? Where's the ductwork going to be? What are we going to do in these rooms? What's the usages of the rooms? Just think of all the time you put into designing that room. Well, the same care and attention to detail must go into your critical listening environment. Then you got to decide what kind of resolution am I going to get. We have three resolution of rooms that we offer. 60 to 70, 70, 80, and 90. This is all low, middle, and high frequency issues. This is for the start point. This is for the hobbyists, for the beginners that understand that they need to improve the acoustics of the room, but don't have the appropriate budget to go higher in most cases. We find most people in this situation, this is a start. They're not going to be happy here, but they want to get started. Okay, good. So this is the first starting point. 70 to 80 is a pro. Semi-pro mixing engineer requirement because they only want to work around 20% of the problems because they're producing product. They're producing product that they have to sell. So the less issues they have to work around, the more creative they can be, better their workflow, all of those issues that go with that. 90%, that's the highest resolution for listening and mix rooms. It's mastering level. You only want to work around 10% of the issues of the room if you're a mastering engineer. If it's a two-channel listening room, we, we prescribe this kind of resolution for people with 15 to 20 years experience of listening because they've heard everything they don't like. That's why they're seeking a high resolution. It's not that they've heard everything they like, but they sure have heard over all those years everything they don't like, and they don't want it. So they're going to plan it for it to get rid of it. So these are the three resolutions they want. Every resolution requirement has cost and space. It's going to cost this much. It's going to take this much space. We get calls every day from people, and I always ask, what's your budget for this project? After listening to what their design goals are. And a lot of times, the budget and the design goals are really far apart. So my job then is to bring those two closer together. Do you have a little bit more budget that we can allow for this so we can get closer to your resolution goals? Okay, we don't have any more dollars to spend, then we have to lower the resolution and break the project up into phases. Once again, design, 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 plan, plan, plan. 
That's the goal here. You must be willing to spend money and give up space. How much space? Low frequency management, 12 to 16 inches on all four walls and floor and ceiling. Hopefully, we don't have to treat both the floor and the ceiling. About 75% of the time, we can get away with just treating one. But it's all dependent on what your resolution goal is, what the size of the room is, what the pressure level that you're going to uh, work at in the room are. Lots of variables. Back to our building the house example. Step by step, many, many processes involved, right? Middle frequency treatment, two to six inches, covering 50 to 65% of all surface areas. These are minimums. And you have to design a plan for that, right? Set the resolution goal and design towards that resolution goal, starting with low frequency management, working your way up to the mids and then the highs. All have different treatment requirements. All have different surface area requirements when you get to the mids and the highs. Diffusion is different than absorption in terms of surface area coverage and space requirements. People don't plan to fail. They just fail to plan. And I see it all the time. I see it with new projects and I see it with retrofits, existing rooms. So planning is the big thing here. You wouldn't want to start a new build without knowing what your objectives are. And budget is very, very critical to all of this. When people call me uh, with their 15 minute appointments in their room forms, my first question is, after we go through what their goals are, what budget do you have? And I get three responses. I don't know. I haven't thought about it and $5,000. None of those three really will get you started because of the surface area coverages that you require. And if you don't know how much you're willing to spend, I don't know how I can help you, see? Because I have to match your budget and what you're willing to commit to the project to your resolution goals. And if they're far apart, I've got to bring you closer back to reality. And then if we're really far apart, we have to stage it. But you have to know that in advance. And you just, you have to know what you're willing to commit to the project. Because, you know, we simply can't waste time. We have to know what your goals are and how much money you have to achieve it. I can tell by looking at the room what we have to do. That's the easy part for me. The hard part for you is establishing what kind of resolution you want and what your budget is and what you're willing to spend to achieve that. So an I don't know, it's not a good answer. You have a pretty good idea. If you don't know a specific amount, then let's work with a range of costs because a range of costs will give us a range of resolution to work with. Budget, space, resolution. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.